Today's episode of Running It Back is up and ready for your listening pleasure. And I got to say, this was a good one, an interesting one. Today, my guest is Dean Larratt. Who is Dean? Well, Dean is an actor, a stand-up comedian, and a chiropractor. And as you'll see, Dean is quite the storyteller. He had stories upon stories, I tell you. We get into it. We run it back. And basically, we run back Dean's entire life. How he originally moved to Los Angeles, how he progressed in the entertainment industry, and how he evolved to become a chiropractor here in the city and everything in between. And I will say, you're going to want to stick around to the end of this one. Dean had never been on a Zoom screen before, which is how I record all these. He was a little perplexed by the whole thing, and I love the way it ended. I thought it was really funny. Stick around and listen to that. Hey, if you're new to my channel, check out my other show, The Sunday Night Talk with Omar Carmona and myself, where we break down each week of the NFL games on a Sunday night, and we have a talk about it. We're on to week number four coming up. That's a lot of fun. My other running and back shows are up as well, where I have a variety of guests, and we break down, well, something they're interested in. Right now... Running it back with me and Dean Larratt. Here you go. All right, on the screen with me today, we've been circling this one for a while. You are, yeah. You're breaking Dean. my, you're breaking my cherry. Actually, this is. Dean Larry, not, you yeah. just informed me this is your first Zoom, ever. How can that be? I well, I still use a Texas Instrument calculator, so um, I, I yeah, I, I, I still of those myself. I still, played a few snake games on those. You are literally divergentizing me today. Uh, this is my first Zoom thing. I have no idea how to do this. We're actually in my girlfriend's house, and. Um, that's a green screen behind me of a kitchen in Queens, New York. Mm. So they, they give you all different zoom gives you all these different choices. So that's all fake behind me. So that stove that you see and all this, this is all fake. I'm not really touching this. And, um, I was going to say, I don't no, have I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Background on my, on my phone. No, I don't this is the, this is the all, this is the all in the family background. This is the, <laughs> this is the bunkers, but, um, so go ahead, uh, Patrick. I don't really know you. I know you from from Flappers. We know each other a little bit from comedy shows. You're right. Yeah. Kind of inter interact there a little bit. So yeah. I was doing some studying. I was like, I need to find some some people, some experienced people, some people in the comedy game. Ask them some questions about stuff. And you came across. I'll be right there. No, I'm kidding. Who, who are you yelling at, Dean? There's a friggin' train. There's a friggin' train. Can you? Can you close the balcony door? I know we're on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's a friggin' train that goes by here on the like 22 and the 35 of every, uh, of every uh, hour. So um, virtual yeah. train or real? No, it's a real train. It's uh, I'm up in, I'm up in Valencia right now. A uh, very long day today. I was at the Valencia car dealership. Um, That's what I want to ask you about. Go you ahead. Go ahead. In a car. What's 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 going on? What would you choose? How was the? I, I'm I'm a leaser. I lease every every three years now because of COVID. I lease every three years, and this year it was four because I extended it during COVID. Um, I'm a three year lease, but I extended it, and uh, it's a it's a Hyundai Sonata that I'm bringing back. I love the car. I I love the Hyundai's. Great price. I don't drive very much. My office is, is, which we'll get into in a little bit. My office is two blocks from where I live. And uh, let's be honest, there's no, there's nothing to really do socially anymore right now. So I'm, I'm not driving. I'm bringing them back a car from 2016 with 22,000 miles for four years. 22,000 miles, four years. It's, it's less than 6,000 miles a year. So you um, are an ideal leaser. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I run it under the 10,000 miles a year thing. So you get them even more of a discount. So I, but, but it's funny, no matter what you do at a car dealer, 
you know, you can say, oh, I'll be in and out of there in an hour, hour and a half. It's, I was wow. there about, we were there about four hours, four and a half hours. Never, and I, yeah, you're never it's, there. You know, it's bad, bad when they, when they offer you coffee. They're like, you want to get some coffee? Right, 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 right. You know, you know, you, you know, there's a problem. And, and then, and then they say to you, they say, well, do you, you say, do you have any hot coffee? No, no, no. We're actually going to go out and grow the beans. Okay. <laughs> you know, so. We're going to um, find someone who knows where to get coffee. Right, 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 right. So, but it, was, uh, it wasn't a nightmare uh, experience. And the same guy that did my last two deals at Hyundai is still there as the manager. Am I gonna, so we worked. I, I looked at uh, two different cars today, uh, drove them. And uh, I like the car. They really, they've done a lot of interesting things to the, to the Hyundai so uh, this is the Sonata Limited as well as the Sonata SEL car. And uh, I guess I'll keep it like this just to see, and, and just to make it, you know, comfortable. And good. Um, it's good. And uh, it's been, you know, just a long day, but I was like, Adam. So you got a new Sonata or you re-upped your current we, Sonata? No, I, I'm, I'm, I still have the, the old one. I still have the current one, the 2016 uh, and then tomorrow I should be able to make a deal with them. We did about 99% of the uh, paperwork. Oh, so this is going to continue tomorrow. The saga will continue, oh. but it's, but the paperwork's done. So okay. we got all that done. And now um, uh, he gave me a price. And they're funny, man. They come out like surgeons. You know, they're like, well, I got good news and I got bad news. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, we can't get the car you want with four wheels. We can get it with three. You know, they, there's always a there's always a glitch. They always say to you, "Yo, yeah, we yeah." No that's problem. where they get you on that fourth wheel. On that fourth wheel. I, that's. What... I bought a car in February. What'd you well. get? I got a Toyota Prius. I never oh. owned a Prius. I was very anti Prius before, but I gotta say, I did some studying. Prius is good. Great car. Larry David has a Larry David drives a Prius. Yeah, yeah. I like how the the salesman, no matter what will always say, oh, hey, what, what, what kind of monthly payments are you looking for? What, what are you looking for your monthly payment? And it's be? never near what you want. <laughs> and in your head, you're like, uh, zero. Are we talking right. in hypotheticals here? <laughs> right, right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It it, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, it, it's, it's a total game. And I always try and not break them down, but I have no problem being a slight pain in the, in the, in the ass um, ah, yes. Okay. I was going to say, what kind of I buyer? No problem. I'm cool about it, but I'm like, come on. I, I, I always tell them that I have a cousin that does this in Long Island, which I do not. Yeah. It brings me to my, my question. You're a chiropractor. I'm a chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor. I've been a stand up comic for 30, 32 years, and I've been a, a chiropractor for 22. <clears throat> well, that's and what I discovered about you because I knew you were a comic from shows and stuff. And then you sort of like, you sort of mentioned some stuff in your act about being, but I didn't know for sure. And then I discovered you're a real deal chiropractor. I'm a legit chiropractor. I have how a, did you, uh, how, how did you um, have that interest in? Did you always want to be a chiropractor? No, 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 no. Absolutely when did not. This start? I, I came out here in 19, December 7th, 1989. I've been out here 31 years and I came out here as an actor and a stand up comedian. And, um, I had a, uh, I was working for the Kardashians when they were little girls, they had nothing to do in business, but I was working for their mom, the, uh, uh, Chris, the uh, Chris Kardashian, the matriarch, the, uh, matriarch. And, um, uh, we were in the uh, shampoo business. We were in the gels and mousses and conditioning business. And, uh, so I was doing that and going on auditions at the same time. And I landed a three-year deal on young and the restless. I had a little bit more hair, blah, blah, blah. And um, I uh, got the, the job, but the guy that I replaced on the show had a cop drama on uh, CBS and he did the pilot, but it wasn't picked up. So he came back to the show and I was gone. Oh so, no. Yeah, it was a bummer. It was a bad time. Uh, and so what happened was I didn't want to live my life um, uh, at the, um, uh, what's the word, uh, the being subservient to, to a producer. Am I, is this the week I'm, I'm going to be able to eat and buy groceries because you decided I could be on the show, that kind of thing. So, um, I, uh, at the time I had hurt my neck. I went to see a chiropractor. 
uh, an old college friend of mine told me to go see a chiropractor. And I was like, those guys will paralyze you. What are you kidding? So one thing led to another. And I went three months with neck pain and I couldn't move my neck. One thing led to another. Uh, I went to all these doctors out here in Beverly Hills. He's the best uh, surgeon. He's the best uh, uh, neck guy. He's the best spine guy. And all they did was give me um, uh, pills and painkillers and all and prednisone and all sorts of uh, anti-inflammatories. And what happened was um, finally I couldn't take it any longer that I was living like this. And I went to see this guy that my, my, my cousin knew. No, that my uh, college friend knew in New York. And, uh, but I went to see him out here and, uh, the guy fixed me up in like literally three minutes. He just, he goes, is this, is this tender? I go, really? yeah. And he just went <laughs> and everything popped and my neck was back to where it was that. So for three months, in one put, visit, one visit, the guy popped me back into place. It was out right here. And he went <laughs> just like that made a loud noise. I went, what the hell was that? I was scared to death. And, um, uh, next thing you know, I have the ability to turn my neck. I hadn't been able to do it in three months. So at that time, I was driving a limo at nighttime, selling shampoo in the daytime. And uh, I was also, if I remember correctly, that's right. I got the job working at the improv. I was the um, showroom manager for the Melrose Improv. Um, How'd you get that job? I, it's very. That's an interesting question and a great story. Um, I went to go see Eric Fagan. I still remember the name, Eric Fagan. He was the talent coordinator for the Melrose Improv back then. And uh, this was August of 1990. He was the talent coordinator. And um, as I, this is a true story, Patrick, as I opened up the door to, to the improv, but not the main, uh, you, how long are you living out here? Uh, I've lived here six years, so I've seen uh, I seen the improv go through one renovation. Oh, okay, okay, one, no, no, yeah. no, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah, if there yeah. was this one is, before that is, too. This is 1990, so there was a door on the side of the main entrance, and that was the door that led up to Bud Friedman and Mark Lunau's office, and all the heavy hitters that were working there at the time. And there weren't many because there was no such thing as what it is now. There was no corporate way. This was two guys that ran a, a, a an all cash uh, you know, business. And, um, so as I pushed the, pulled the door to go see Eric, the talent coordinator upstairs, the door slammed up against my, my hand as, because I went to go reach for it. And who's on the other side of that door, Bud Friedman, he's got the monocle up against his, uh, his, his eye. And, uh, he's like, uh, hello, how are you? How are you? Are you here for the job as a showroom manager? And I go, no, what are you talking about? I had no idea what he was talking about. I said, I'm here to see Eric Fagan. Um, I'm trying, I'm a comic from New York and I want to get spots. I'd like to see auditioning for you guys. And he goes, uh, okay, but you're hired for the job. And I go, what? This is true, all true. I go, what are you, what are you talking about? Hired for what? He goes, um, we I need a showroom manager to run the back room, the actual showroom. And this was like, it was just a very odd thing. It was almost like when Rocky gets told by uh, Mr. Jurgens, uh, Rocky, I don't think you understand. Would you be interested in fighting Apollo Creed for the heavyweight? And you just go, you know, you look, it was one of those things where I was, was like, that, that was your Rocky moment? That was, was my, that was my, my that, was, that was my Jurgens telling Rocky a moment. Yeah, would you be interested? I just went, excuse me? Because I yeah. knew and you said, was, I won't take no cheap shots of, of, of a man, you know, you know, Mr. Jurgens, and I, I, and I, I really would be a really good sparring partner. And you know something? What, Rocky? I wouldn't take any cheap shots either, you know. Um, <laughs> so but uh, so what happened was he said, you know, be here tonight at seven o'clock and the other guy will explain to you how to do this. And uh, I, I came back at seven o'clock. I remember calling my girlfriend at the time. And I said, I don't quite know what I just stepped into. I don't know, but I just know that something weird just happened. The king, the godfather of comedy has just given me a job. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I have no clue. All I know yeah. is- it's Why do you all... think he did that? Why do you think he just- I had that, New York, get... I had that New York way about me and he's from New York. Uh -huh. 
And I said, I'm out here from New York. I just got out here six months. I'm a comic. And he goes, that's great. Uh, You want the job? (laughs) And I said, "Uh, I'll take it. I'll come here and try it. I said, I'll try. And uh, I got the job. And and, um, I think it was a couple of guys, I think Dave Rath, uh, who went on to become a pretty big manager. Dave Rath um, uh, was the guy who trained me. He was the night, he was the man, he was the light guy as well. And our job was every comic had to, you had to come through me to get on that stage. Meaning I had the Jerry Seinfelds, the Lenos, the Paul Prevenzes, the Mario Joyners, the George Wallaces, the Dom Iraras, the Fleischers, the Dane Rodney, I, they had, Roseanne, they had to come over to me and say, excuse me, um, like Jerry would come over and go, hey, can I just want to try out? I'm trying to, I'm working on a new 10 that I, you know, can I get time? I don't want to bump anybody. I don't want to bump anybody, but I'll be outside there, you know, having a cup of coffee. I don't want to bump anybody, blah, blah, blah. Um, and these are the people that I was dealing with out of nowhere, out of nowhere, no. this, like this, okay? Now, you have to understand, this is August of 90 or September of 90. And so Jerry had just done his pilot and I think the first four episodes aired or something like that. And then they got shelved and all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. But you got Jay Leno. So a typical Thursday, the place started, a Sandler, Sandler was there. Um, uh, I mean, this was the prime time to, to be a comic and to be hanging out at the improv. A typical Thursday, Friday, Saturday night was pretty much all the names I mentioned. Um, mm. But it was it was packed. The showroom was packed and all the all the front, the front room was packed from with comics and, and audience. And, you know, sitting over there with Bud was Jay Leno. Um, And sitting uh, over there, there's George Wallace hanging out with Jerry. They were roommates in New York. Um, I knew George from New York, actually. Uh, It it was just, it was an unbelievable period. I did it for three years. And then I ended up going to chiropractic uh, college. And that was a full-time thing. But um, it was uh, was just a a, a wonderful experience. And everybody was there. How old were you at the time of all this? Um, 11. No, I was, uh, uh, Quick learner. I, 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 this, I was 26, 20 in 1990, I was 26. So I'm 56 right now. And, um, it was just, uh, those were great days. They were really, I worked seven o'clock at night till two in the morning. Back then, do you know that the comics were paid $35 a set, which was 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, they were 20 minutes, set, uh, 15 minute sets. And they got $35. You know, the comics now make about $10, five to $10. Yeah. I was going to say, it sounds about the same, if not in the way. No, it was better. It's better then. They were getting $35 a set. And um, uh, now they, you know, they pay comics uh, peanuts. And um, when I say now, I don't mean literally now because of what we're going through. But uh, it was, um, it was just an amazing experience. Uh, uh, just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's just one of those things that, you know, how was your night tonight? Oh man, I watched Leno crush. I just saw Leno destroy, um, uh, Seinfeld, uh, watched him destroy. Um, it, it was just, it was beautiful. Uh, George Wallace, uh, I rare, they, there was, there was such, such great comedians, um that would come in and uh and and i shouldn't you know i should also say female comics but there weren't that many back then there sure, wasn't yeah. what it is now when you sitting- came into that job were you a uh, a big comic fan already were you oh, huge, acting huge, comic huge, huge. equal you were huge so you knew all oh, the names huge. already oh huge i was uh, i you was were following- thrown into the the cool was, kids table and you were i i was following it. i was following stephen wright in, in 1982 at SUNY Brockport, upstate New York. Um, he uh, saw him play in Rochester. I saw Sandra Bernhard play SUNY Brockport at my school. Um, uh, I was, I was in, I've been into comedy since I was, I was going into school in fourth grade at age 10 and doing Johnny Carson's monologue the following morning. The following I was, day, oh yeah, yeah. 
I was the only kid in school. I could see that. The, the kids didn't know who I was doing because they were sleeping. Johnny Carson used to be on 11.30 at night till 1 in the morning. It was 90 minutes, and then it dropped down to, to, a half, uh, to an hour. And my mother, I grew up in such a crazy household that my mother would be watching Carson with me in, in my room. She would watch Carson, especially if Rickles was on or Henny Youngman or or Freddie Prinze at that time. Uh, rest in peace, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, Brenner, David Brenner, George Carlin. Um, I was following these guys since some third, fourth grade. And I would come in and do, you know, uh, uh, you know, tonight we have uh, Don, Don Rickles is on the show. And I would do and the teachers knew what I was doing. Kids didn't have yeah, a clue. The adults knew, yeah. Right. And they're thinking, what is this guy doing up till one in the morning? I had to be in school at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but that was my childhood back then. And later on, I would read Bruce Springsteen's, um, I'm a very big Springsteen fan, and I read his, his autobiography. And he talks about being the kid in school that was sleeping half the time in school because his parent, his, his, he was able to stay up till two, three o'clock in the morning on a school night. And I had a little bit of that. And, saw um, that, yeah. and I, and I went, Oh my God, we had almost the same kind of upbringing. It's going to say, take me through a typical night uh, for you in 1990, because all the big comics are going on, but what was it like for you? You're managing, you're, I, I'm guessing, trying to get spots around town. What was your... Trying, what was, I, no, I didn't really yeah. care too much about because back then, they had that little unwritten law back then where if you're at the improv, you can, you're not playing the store. Okay. And if you're, yeah, they, there was a competition back then between Mitzi, Shore, who what I... What clubs were around then? We had the there store. Was, there were the three clubs. There were three clubs in Hollywood. There were three clubs in Hollywood, the comedy store, the factory... And uh, Mitzi had the store, Jamie had the factory, and Bud and Mark had the improv. But there was Igby's, Igby's Comedy Club, which I think was Jan Smith uh, on Tennessee Avenue in, in, uh, in West L.A. And that was a hot spot, too, Igby's. And um, then there was the Comedy and Magic in, uh, in Hermosa Beach. But I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I was trying to grow I was trying to, I was doing the open mics with like Michael Rappaport's, Jamie Kennedy, um, uh, Danny Woodburn from Seinfeld. Uh, I was doing rooms with those guys, uh, Chris Spencer, Suli McCullough, um, uh, Bobby Pollock. I don't even know if you know these names. Um, Felipe Esparza was, uh, was in mm -hmm. So not I a clip. Yeah, uh, I would run into him from time to time. Uh, and we were doing open mics at the Natural Fudge, which was owned by two hippies on Fountain Avenue of Franklin. And um, <laughs> that was a total, you know, just the pot hangout and, and just, you know, get fried and, and, and do stand up. But it was great. It was a great room. And um, uh, but getting back to something that I, I, I wouldn't want to leave out is female comics in the in 90. Back then, you had um, uh, Carol Leifer would come in. Um, there was a few. Claudia Lunau, Mark's daughter, would, would uh, get up. There was a few back then. Um, I'm, I'm trying to... Judy Gold, uh, Tenuta, Judy Tenuta. Um, oh, there's a few that I have there. Their faces in front of me now. Um, but I can't, I can't, uh, I can't pull it... Um, uh, Sue Kalinsky. Um, there was just, it was, there was some good comics, um, but it wasn't what it is now. The Kira Sultanovich is the um, uh, 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 Kill Martin, Lori Kill Martin. Um, I, there's so many, uh, Bonnie McFarland. There's so many uh, uh, great female comics now. So I didn't want, I don't want it to just sound like, oh, it was uh, only men. It was only, you know, uh, uh, guys sure. that were yeah. doing it. But unfortunately, back then, in order to make the sentence and the statement more accurate, I have to say it, it's true. There weren't many. There weren't sure. many. Yeah. So I really can't sit here and pull uh, 35 names out because they really, I don't think there were 35 comics, uh, mm -hmm. females, females. And, um, but it was, it was an interesting time, man, because, you know, you watched, I saw Jerry Seinfeld go from a guy making a few hundred thousand dollars a year. Jerry was always a big earner, contrary to what, 
you you might think. Jerry was always making money. Don't ever believe any other story that he was bussing tables and waiting tables. Jerry Seinfeld was always making money as a comic in New York. It was what was the day like? The day was like um, calling my friends in New York and going, "You are not going to believe the lineup tonight that I'm going to be a part of." And and yeah. And these, they will have to go through me. The sand. Were you making the lineups at the time? How would the lineups? No, I work? wasn't involved in the. I wasn't involved in the lineup. Eric Fagan. Eric Fagan was was making the lineups, and um, I would no. That was not. Uh, that was was and still is not the job of the showroom manager. The show, that was the that was the booker, and that was Eric, and I'm still friends with Eric on Facebook, and um. He was he's a nice, good guy, nice guy. So they'd come they, in, they'd sort of check in with you about the lineup. They had to and check in with you. You would sort of manage the show itself. I had to make sure that this, the lights. I had to, yeah, I had to give this guy the light at, with, with two minutes to go, whoever it mm -hmm. is. And uh, it was just a great time, man, because, you know, the drugs that was being, you know, everybody was on the corner by the flower shop on Melrose. Everybody was doing drugs and, and it, <laughs> but it was, it was, but it was fun. It wasn't like, it, it, I don't know. How, I don't know how to explain this. It was just a, a good, it was a fun period. I, 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 and I was really not abusing anything. I was never really into that stuff. Maybe I smoked a little pot, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I was never really, in, I never got into that stuff, uh, Coke or any of that stuff. Um, I was more of a mellow guy. I'm not a guy who likes to be, my heart is beating. I, I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I don't like that feeling. So um, did it like four or five times and I went, this isn't for me. Um, wow, you but, made it out alive, Dean. I made it out alive. Got to feel good about doing, that. Doing cocaine five times with my brother in uh, at college at his college when I was all of fifteen. Nineties, you're managing, you're driving the limo, you're selling shampoo. When does the when does the chiropractor come into? Ninety three, September, January of ninety three. I go sign up for my science classes because I have a four year degree in accounting from University of Maryland, and uh, I le I. I I don't have a science background, so I have to take uh, science classes for eight months. It's two years condensed into eight months, and I have to take those classes um, on Vermont Avenue off the 101 freeway, and that gives me the license to go into chiropractic school in September of 93, and I did. I went into school. Uh, I did four years, and um, best thing I ever did. and um, I mean, smartest move I ever made. I love doing chiropractic. I love doing stand up and uh, and i've and I've gotten decent amount of acting work um, by knowing my patients that are in the business that are either oh, producers sure. I could see that yeah. yeah that are producers. so it has it it sort of it's sort of fulfilled a few things the, the chiropractic it put money in my pocket it helped others i helped people with a lot of different ailments uh, headaches uh, i don't know if you know anything about chiropractic um but it's uh I, I i do wonders for headaches and for um back pain and it, it's a it's a wonderful field when it's done correctly and and mm -hmm. when you go to see somebody who knows what they're doing um yeah but it's it's, uh, uh, it's interesting, like when you when people come here, a large amount of your networking starts at your day job. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, absolutely. you think it's like, oh, I'm going to put my foot in this it's here. like your day job. That's where you make your most connections. And oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, absolutely. it's funny yeah. like that. Yeah, I've had a, many day jobs where like I actually meet more people here at my work. Absolutely. As someone who, who knows a little bit about chiropractic, I've only been once or twice for chiropractic stuff, what do I, what, what do I need to know? What goes on there? With regard to what in relationship to you, how, what are you, what are you getting oh, at? Just in general, tell me if I'm saying, Hey, I've never been to a chiropractor. I'm interested to go. I've heard good feedback. I usually say, what do you tell me after that. I usually say to the person who's, who's a, a, a coming for the first time, I usually say, Oh, you're going to have the greatest experience because you're coming with something from a spine that has that has obvious the reason you're in this pain is because you have never been adjusted in other words the people who respond real quick are the virgins to it who actually go 
oh my God, I've been living with this headache for 11 years. You're telling me that you going like that would have alleviated that and I could have dealt with that instead of running around um, on medicine and ibuprofen. And I go, yeah, believe it or not, we, yeah, you could have. Um, I see. So I sort of explained to them that you're actually different than the person who's been adjusted 500 times in his life, his or her life. And now they have something that's bothering them. And those are the ones that believe it or not, take a few more visits than, than the one who comes in fresh. Yeah, there's a theory to muscle memory, meaning you've been stuck in this position for 27 years with this headache. Um, so there's a good chance that you, the guy who's done it 500 time has, times has defeated muscle memory, or has overcome muscle memory. You know what muscle memory is? Mm -hmm. It's going to come back. It's going to do everything in its power to shift back to what it knows. Okay. But I always tell people when they say, oh, I got pain behind my back from sitting at my new job and at the computer. And I go, okay, you, have you ever been adjusted? And they go, no, I've never been adjusted. When they get adjusted, it's like a bolt of lightning has come their way because they just, they can't believe uh, they have a coworker who swears by this. It's one of those things. I have a coworker mm -hmm. who swears by this and that was it. So I, it's, it, I've been very blessed with this business. I have, um, I try and be humble about it, but I'm one of the highest rated chiropractors in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, if uh, on my Yelp reviews, I have like, 400 and some odd reviews for all five star. And, um, so I have, I have been very lucky and, uh, but I put a lot of time into it and to be, I put luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation. I was prepared. I developed a really good knack for manipulation of the spine. Have so you it's ever been, had a case where you, uh, a particularly satisfying case where you say, save someone from getting the, surgery. I had, I, Oh, so surgery. I say that, that happens all yeah, the time. I imagine That's nothing. That I had a woman who had a, a migraine headache for 30 years, 30 years, mm -hmm. migraine headache, the same headache for 30 years. I said, when you say the same headache, I said, are you saying literally 24 seven for 30 years? And she said, 23, six and a half for 30 years. I go, are you kidding me? And she was like, I said, you never, she goes, well, I'm from, I think she was from Germany, if I remember correctly. She goes, they, they don't really have that kind of uh, modality there. Uh -huh. And um, so one thing led to another. And I went like this. I said, is this tender when I touch this area here? She was laying face up. And uh, she goes, yeah, it's really painful. And I didn't crack anything. I did a different form of manipulation. And I still, and I, I do the quote unquote crack as well, but I didn't need to for her. And I just did this move that I do on people. And, um, she gets off the table and she goes, uh, that was, this was a heavy duty thing for me. Cause I felt really amazing after she gets off the table and she goes, Oh my God. She goes, I go, what's up? I thought maybe something's weird. And she goes, I don't, I don't have a headache anymore. She goes, it's like, she goes, I had this pain behind my eye as well. And that's all gone. And I, and she goes, what did you do? And I said, your bone was sticking out this way and this way tilted. And, um, it was rubbing up against your brain stem and that's, what's causing the massive migraine. Uh, and she goes, Oh, I, I and, and it's crazy. Cause I checked on her like five weeks later. She goes, no, I haven't had a migraine. I haven't had anything since I saw mm -hmm. you. Let me ask you a question. What about you, man? I spoke about me. Well, I don't know much about you except, and I don't, I think, I don't know if I've ever, have you ever seen me perform at, 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 uh, at, yeah. at Flappers? You I have. have? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. A couple okay. times. Okay. Couple okay, times. cool. We How did I do? Same... How did I do? Did I do okay? Uh, yeah, you did fine. Okay. <laughs> what good. do you mean? Did I do okay? Okay, good. I, you know, I always like. We were on the same. We were on the same show a couple times. On you who? Uh, yeah. Okay. A couple of those ones. Yeah, that's where okay. that's where I remember you from. Okay. So yeah, that's where I saw you, um, and then we spoke about the chiropractic stuff a couple times after because I was curious about it. My background is is athletics, is cycling. Know? Uh, so oh, really? I grew up riding and racing bicycles all over the country. And then uh, I worked in a bicycle store throughout all that. And then I did uh, bike fitting. 
So we worked with a doctor. We did the bike fitting, all the biomechanics. So that, that's you, where you, you I still, was curious about. You yeah, still when do I first this? moved. Okay. Yeah, when I first moved to LA, I went straight to a bike store and started looking for jobs there because all my background is bicycle store and in retail. That's great. That so bicycle store did the bike fitting, and then I did that on my own after that. So, but yeah, there was a lot of crossover with chiropractic. People would come in like, we see a oh, lot you know of cycle. I see a lot I of can never cycling is a very easy way to get injured because Huge. it's so low impact and Huge. it's so repetitive. So Huge. you don't know there's a problem until and it's the bending forward problem. and yeah, it, flexibility. It's, yeah. And, and um, huge. I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time I see so a lot of bike fitting clients were like, oh, I've been to a chiropractor or I've never been. I'm going to plan to go one. I've had an issue that I and just can't quite get rid of. These are my events, blah, blah, blah. So there was a lot of crossover and of course that sort you, of world. And of course, you design your bikes so that on the down stride, the knee never locks out. There's always like a, a 25 degree angle or whatever. 30 or something. Degrees. Is that what they want? 30? 28 to 32 degrees is the range. And independent okay. if you're flexible or your goals or whatever, you right. air higher. Depend less. Correct. Right. I've been I've been running for 44 years. I started when I was like oh, 11, okay, 12 runner. Years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Running so. is is similar. I could never run. I always kind of zone out, but cycling I could do. I could ride. Forever. So what's the most what's the most you've ever cycled? How far? Oh, well, I've done several races that were over a hundred miles. Each so, each race was the hunt yeah. was a hunt. That's pretty common though. Races are, are long on the road. It's, it's a, a long distance thing. Several races over a hundred miles, uh, lots of in between some short, super short, intense races. They're called crits here in the U S where you just go around in circles. Okay. For like 90 minutes. It's super fast, super intense. Um, done millions of those cross races, which are sort of a modified okay. road bike on the dirt sort of thing. And then of course, mountain, I started as a mountain biker way back when. So if I was looking for a bike, I could def you would definitely be able to put me in the right in the right direction. That's yeah. Cool. What are you look well, what are you looking for, Dean? Well, you want a bike? I've always, you know, every time <laughs> I see these bikers go by, I go, I gotta get a bike at some point because I'm the kind of guy. Yeah, I've I'm been on all those rides. I always have said that you Saturday mornings when you see the big group of bicycle riders, yep. that's the hair salon for middle-aged men. Correct. They will go on the bike ride and That's they will talk all day. They will have coffee stops. And they'll do 150 miles, 130 they'll ride, miles. Uh, they'll yeah. ride all day. Yeah. yeah. I went on a group ride once. We stopped a million times. Oh, yeah. And then coffee. at the end, I was like, right. all right, we'll see you guys. They're like, all right, you guys want to head over the pass? I'm like, you guys are still going to ride? And these were guys these, in their 60s. These guys, like, what, they're bicycling. Cycle, yeah, cyclists are a very different breed. They, yeah. They're a very different breed. They're different than the distance runner. Distance runners tend to be solitude. They want they run by themselves. Mm -hmm. Distance runners like because they put the headphones on, they want to listen um, and they want to listen to their music and get into that zone. But I'm the kind of guy that the reason I ask you about a bike is because I'm the kind of guy that would have no problem going out at two o'clock in the morning. North Hollywood, Studio City, wherever I'm living at the time. And riding out to Calabasas, as long as I have some Springsteen on and some Billy Joel and some Stones and Who and... and, mm -hmm. um, and Well, that's what's great about cycling is you can, number one, you walk out your door, you can do it. There's no going yeah. to a gym. There's no going to a no. golf course. No. Walk out your door. And then secondly, everybody can ride a bike. So right. a beginner gets on the bike and they're doing it. If you were to say, hey, I really want to get in the guitar. I'm a beginner. You don't just play the guitar. No, you can't. It takes a, a bicycle. You're yeah. doing it. You can go correct. enjoy it from day one and then improve along the way. Correct. Correct. And that's why I'm always there are nights where I go when I'm running, where I go, you know, man, I sort of wish that I wasn't having to run that. I'm, I wish I was cycling different, mm -hmm. different, different uh, pressure taken off of the body. Mm -hmm. And I was always a smart runner. I didn't really, I gave up the cement, uh, 20 some odd years. I gave that up about 20 some odd years ago. So I'm yeah. a treadmill. A lot a of treadmill runners guy. become cyclists due to, due to, injury. they have to, they have to, the they knees and the to, spine, yeah. knees, the knees and spine. Feet. Yep. His knees, feet and spine get destroyed. And, um, but I'm, I'm a track guy. I run the track. I run the treadmill. Unfortunately, right now, can't mm -hmm. get to a friggin' gym, a gym for the for the for the track uh, for the treadmill, but um, but I will tell you one thing. I've been running in Toluca Lake, 
at around like 5 36 o'clock in the morning and their roads in Toluca Lake are tarred and it's oh, okay. literally it's literally the difference is night and day I have not had joint pain at all from my runs Excuse you me. have a um in your shoe an orthotic do you use anything I did the whole orthotic thing for years it, was it helpful um, or not? and I have to tell you I ended up with a lot of hip pain and ah. after I pulled them both out I haven't had any pain. Uh, oh, uh, it's yeah. weird. It can go that, that way sometimes. It, yes, it can. Yes, There's a lot can. of trial and error when it comes to When it comes stuff to orthotics, like that, when shoes, you start yeah. altering, when you start altering the gait and the foot planting, um, yeah, people who are proponents of orthotics and make their living with orthotics, they'll tell you there's nothing else. It's the old theory. If, you have a, if you're a carpenter, your hammer is your favorite, you know, friend. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's come on. But, um there are people that when they sell orthotics, they give you the hard sell. Oh, there, there's no way your pain will go away or your back will be good. Not unless you wear this. And they're $1,000 a pop and blah, 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 blah. But mm -hmm. um, yes, that is uh, that is something that I do uh, um, think about. I go, man, that would be so cool. Two o'clock in the morning, put my, iP my iPod, I have the mini mm -hmm. thing, and just zone out on a beautiful night 75 degrees blah 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 no traffic on the road it's one o'clock two o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning ventura boulevard all the way up to calabasas that kind of a ride wow I that would be that's cool yeah that would be cool I'm to say and you know yeah. got, uh, well i'm glad i got to know you a, a little bit because i really I, I told my girlfriend before i go i don't really know this guy i don't and but i will tell you one thing and then we'll finish the coolest celebrity I've ever met, like the coolest guy that I've ever met and actually hung with, Springsteen. The Springsteen, boss? You the hung boss. with the boss? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've hung wow. with the boss a few. I've hung with the boss a few times. I've oh, hung God. with him three. I've hung with him three times, and the that's the cool. That's the coolest. That's the coolest guy. There's. Let's see if that. Let's see if that picture comes. Yeah, up. I think I see it. Let's see if it yeah, rotates. I, Come on, Bruce. Come on. Wow. There's Bruce. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Now it's coming. The, there it is. There it is. Whoa. That's that's the boss. Wow. And um, amazing. Yeah, that's I'm, crazy. I, my buddy's that's been boss friends. FaceTime. Yeah, my buddy's been friends with him a long time. So whenever they come out to LA, we go backstage and hang out. But amazing. Well, thanks right. for uh, I know you got to get Dave. going. How does this thing work? Like, could you have kept going at like? or they charge you or how does it work? How does that, how does Zoom work? Is there free time and then it, there is not free time or how does it work? Hey, that's the episode today, everyone. Thanks for listening. Did I tell you that was going to go somewhere? Or did I tell you that was going to go somewhere? I think Dean might still be talking. I might have to go check on him on the Zoom screen. Ah, he'll be fine. I want to thank everybody for listening. Thank you, Dean Larratt. Thank you, loyal listeners. Hey, there's always new stuff happening here. I'm glad when people are listening to it and giving me feedback on the whole shebang. What else is going on? So much sports is going on, entertainment, and a variety of guests. Hey, there's one in the pipe coming up that I'm really excited about. I won't say what yet, but I think you're going to like it. Thank you, everybody. See you next time.